Welcome to this first video in a series on the basics of electrical engineering and in this first video what we're going to try and do is have a look at these five quantities uh, charge, current, voltage, power and energy. So just very quickly uh, I want to explain what we've got on this first slide here. Uh, we have these five quantities and they're each represented uh, in different equations by five symbols. So for instance, uh, the, the quantity of charge is given by the, the symbol Q. So if we see Q crop up in an equation, we know that it represents charge. And likewise, the symbol I for current, V for voltage, P for power, and E for energy. And we're going to see how these five quantities relate to one another. We're going to look at some different formulas and see some different examples of how we can calculate these quantities um, throughout this video. The other thing to mention on this slide here is the units that these quantities are measured in. So charge is measured in coulombs. And we give that the, uh, the, the letter C for short. Uh, current is measured in amps or, or A. Voltage is measured in volts with a capital V. Uh, power is measured in watts, uh, which is a capital W for the unit. And energy measured in joules, capital J. So what we're going to do, like I say, is we're going to have a go at trying to calculate some of these uh, some of these quantities and see how these quantities relate to each other in a series of examples. So we're going to begin by looking at the first quantity on our list, which is charge. And we're going to actually start on a very, very small scale because we could talk about charge in circuits um, and currents and things like that. We're going to get to that, but I want to start by looking at a very, very small charge. We're just going to look at the charge on one uh, electron, one tiny electron. And the charge on an electron is very, very small. Um, it's 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And you'll notice there I've given it the, the letter of a small q, just to denote that that's the charge just on one electron. And what we're going to do actually is not just look at one electron, but we're going to consider uh, two electrons. So I've got two electrons there. And what happens is because they've both got the same charge, and you'll notice they've both got a negative charge, there's a little minus sign uh, next to each electron. Um, the, the, they've both got a, a negative charge, they're going to repel one another. Uh, just like magnets, if, if you bring together the, the north and north pole of a magnet, or the south and south pole of a magnet, those like poles are going to repel one another. It's the same thing for these charged particles, these electrons. And so what happens is we're going to see a force between the two um, particles there. Uh, the letter F there to denote a force between those two particles. Now, one other bit of information that we have to consider is how far apart those electrons are. As they get closer and closer together, just like the repelling magnets, the closer they are, the greater that force is going to be. So the, the distance between the two uh, electrons is going to have a, an effect as well. And I'm going to note that as the letter R. And for example's sake, let's say that in this particular instance, R is 0.5 nano meters 0.5 nanometers so a very very small distance between them and the other bit of information that we need to know is something called coulomb's constant and coulomb's constant written there is unfortunately another very nasty number uh, 8.988 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared coulombs to the minus two. Now, don't worry about that nasty unit at the end there. I'm not too bothered about that. But this, this value for coulombs constant is important. So what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and calculate this force between two electrons. And we need the, the formula to calculate the, the force between two charged particles. And it looks like this. It's F equals KE 
And you'll notice that Ke is the term that we gave for the Coulomb's constant there. Multiplied by a fraction. And on the top of this fraction, I need to put both uh, charges of each charged particle in question multiplied together. So I want to call these Q1 and Q2. On the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to put the distance between them, r squared. What I'm now going to do is try and put the values that I've been given here into this formula. So the first thing we can see is that Ke value is the Coulomb's constant, which we know. So we can straight away put that in there, which is 8.988 multiplied by 10 to the 9. And as well as that, we know the charges on each particle. Now, in the formula there, Q1 times Q2, we're multiplying those two charges together. In this case, we can cheat a little bit because both of those charges are the same. So rather than multiplying two different charges together, I'm just going to put the one charge, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. And we can see that that's squared because we're multiplying the same charge by itself. On the bottom, we're going to put r squared. And we said that the distance between these two electrons in, the, in our example here is 0.5 nanometers. Now, we need to express that in standard form. So nano is times 10 to the minus 9. So on the bottom of my formula here, I'm going to put 0.5 times 10 to the minus 9. But again, that's r squared on the bottom of the formula. So I need to put a bracket around that and square that also. If I pop that all into a calculator, I should get an answer of 9.23 times 10 to the minus 10, and that's measured in newtons. So 9.23 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons, and newtons is the unit of force. Now, rather than writing 9.23 times 10 to the minus 10, we could instead write 0.923 times 10 to the minus 9. Why do I want to do that? Well, because 10 to the minus 9 is the same as saying nano when we're referring to our units. So rather than saying 0.923 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons, we can instead say 0.923 nanonewtons, which is a little bit nicer um, an answer. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of these um, answers here and better express this answer in nanonewtons. So I can say 0.923 nanonewtons. Let's now think about the second quantity on our list, which was current. And current we can define as the flow of charge per second. So current and charge are linked. Um, we've already had a look at charge on the previous slide, but now we're going to start thinking about current. So if we imagine uh, a, a wire in a circuit, for instance, that has a current flowing through it, well, we have to imagine the flow of charge. And if there's a flow of charge, it means that there's a flow of electrons. So there's tiny electrons, uh, far too many that I could ever draw, um, but you get the idea. There's these tiny little electrons flowing through the wire. And because we, we have this definition here, the flow of charge per second, we can come up with a formula for current. So remember that current, we give the symbol I. And the formula that I'm going to write here is I equals Q over T. It's charge over time, or the flow of charge per second. So... Let's have a think of an example here. Let's imagine that in one second, I have a number 
of electrons flowing past this point in the wire. And let's say that that number, we'll call it uh, the letter N, let's say that that number is 8 times 10 to the 18. Now, just to explain that number, 10 to the 18, that's uh, a billion billion. So we've got 8 billion billion electrons flowing through this point in the wire per second. So lots and lots of electrons, more than I could care to draw. But we're going to use this formula to help us work out what the current is in amps in this circuit. Now, what I need to do is just make a slight amendment to this uh, formula here. Rather than saying Q over T, or capital Q over T, I'm going to change this because rather than looking at the total charge, Q, we want to think about the individual charges on these electrons. So I'm going to change this formula slightly, and rather than writing Q over T, I'm going to write N little q over T. Now remember, little q is the letter that we gave for the charge on one electron. So now, these are some numbers that we know, because we know N, the number of electrons, we know little q, the charge on one electron, and we know T, it's going to be one second. So let's write that into our formula. Uh, N being 8 times 10 to the 18, multiplied by Q, which was 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. And on the bottom of our fraction is T for time, which we said is just going to be one second. So when we plug all of this into a calculator, we get a nice answer, which is 1.28. Now remember, we're calculating a current here, and the unit of current is amps. So we've calculated 1.28 amps for the current. Let's think about the next two quantities on our list, which are voltage and power. So here I've got a, a little circuit, um, very, very simple circuit, uh, consisting of just two components. I've got a battery on the left, and I've got a, a bulb on the right-hand side. Now, let's imagine that our previous example, where we calculated the current caused by a flow of electrons, is the same current that's in this circuit here. So we calculated a current on the previous slide of 1.28 amps. So let's imagine that that 1.28 amps is flowing in this circuit. And what's going to happen is that current is hopefully going to cause our bulb to light up, like so. Beautiful. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to calculate the power that is uh, in this or dissipated by this bulb. Now, the way we're going to do that is by considering the voltage in the circuit. So the voltage in the circuit, for example's sake, let's say it's a 10 volt battery. So we know the voltage now, we know the current, and we're going to calculate the power. Now, the formula, thankfully, is nice and simple. It looks like this. It's P for power equals I for current times V for voltage. And that's it. So, nice and easy, hopefully. Uh, the current we know is 1.28. The voltage we know is 10. 1.28 times 10 is going to give me 12.8. And it's a power so it's measured in watts. Finally, our last quantity is the quantity of energy. And again, the formula for energy is thankfully nice and easy. It looks like this. E equals P times T. So energy equals power multiplied by time. Now, let's consider the same circuit. And let's imagine that we're going to allow 30 seconds to elapse. So the bulb is, is lit for 30 seconds. And the question is, how much energy has the bulb 
used in 30 seconds. So we're going to use this formula um, to work that out as well. So nice and easy, uh, power times time. Well, the power we know from the previous uh, question there is 12.8, and the time we know is 30. So calculating that, we get an answer of 384. And again, because it's an energy, we need to use the right unit, and the unit of energy is joules, so 384 joules. That's it for this first video on these five key quantities, voltage, current, charge, power, and energy. I hope you found it useful.